Before we get started with today's show, I just want to say that our thoughts and all of our prayers go out to Derek Lively and his family. Kathy Drysdale, his mother, passed away. She was dealing with the battle with cancer, and she was a huge, massive figure that loomed large, obviously, in Derek Lively's life. Uh, she lived with him. Uh, when he was living here in Dallas, and uh, and that was a big deal that they were together. They, you know, fought together after Derek Lively's father passed away, and those two were, you know, you could always see her around the arena. She was just always around, and she was there with Derek Lively. And one of my favorite things that I'll always remember about about Derek Lively's mom, Kathy Drysdale, was that, you know, he, Derek Lively got asked a question about his mom, and he mentioned his mom, and so then. I was sitting in the press conference, and his mom was sitting right behind me, and I knew she was. And I looked up at Derek Lively, and I said, I said, hey, he, he mentioned that his mom gives him notes after games. And I said, hey, did your mom give you any notes after last game that led to you having such a great game this time? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. She told me I got to keep moving my feet, got to keep, you know, doing this and this and this. She was obviously a, you know, a great college player. And I turned around, and I looked at her, and she just nodded like, yep, that's exactly, that's exactly what I told him. And, uh, man, she's just such a big influential figure. And, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to Derek Lively and his family. On today's show, we'll talk about the Dallas Mavericks. They're in the fifth seed officially now. They will play the Clippers. And the Denver Nuggets lose. What does that mean for the Mavericks and more? We'll talk about all that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. Luncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Oh, I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Let me know what you think about the Mavericks finish to the season. One game left, Luka and Kyrie sitting. How do you feel about that? Let us know anything in the comment section. And then go over to Locked on Clippers and then just, you know, leave leave a nice little comment. Uh, just just go Mavs. Let's just do it. Let's start with the go Mavs. We'll do different things every day that I'll tell you to go comment on Locked on Clippers. Darian will come on this week. We'll have a lot of fun with that. And we'll, uh, we'll have lots of time to prep Mavs, Clippers, and we may talk about it. But we may talk about that today. We're going to do some freewheeling talk about the Mavs. We'll maybe talk about this game, the Mavs-Pistons game. Maybe. Because yeah. I don't – there's not, there's, not, there's not a lot of meat on the bone, if you know what I'm talking about, from a game like this. My thoughts and prayers also go out to Kuka Hill for having to cover this Pistons team all season <laughs> in their 68 losses now. But joining me, as always, on a post game, what you got for me, Slightly Biased? D-Live, we love you, man. You got thousands of fans Absolutely. in your corner supporting you every step of the way, man. We love you, buddy. Absolutely. He was here at the game tonight. He... Uh, you know, was was here supporting his his teammates, and like that's just the type of guy he is. The statement that he yeah. put out on Instagram was so, you know, thoughtful and, and heartfelt. And man, yeah, it, it was it was a surprise to a lot of us here that you know we were just talking to a lot of people before the game, and it was just a surprise. But but yeah, yeah, you know, we have no update on Derek Lively if he'll play or what's next and anything like that. So we don't know any answers to that. But let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks. They played a game against the Pistons. They lose, which means the Mavericks. Uh, it doesn't mean a lot. The, the actual game itself didn't mean a lot, but the Mavericks will now be fifth in the West. Let's kind of talk about this Mavericks team, and let's kind of start here. The Mavericks finished fifth. At what points in the season would you have been like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I can't believe that the Mavericks finished fifth and, like, really satisfied with that because it feels like a couple times, especially even, like, the beginning of this season, before the season, if you had told me the Mavs finished fifth, I think I would have been ecstatic. I was about to say the same exact thing right before the season started. Fifth, I'll take it. I went back and I looked at like my preseason predictions. I had them sixth, and I was listening yeah, to what I was two. saying, and it was like I was I was trying to justify it because I think deep <laughs> down in my heart of hearts, I thought they'd be a playing team, but yeah. um, they've they definitely exceeded my expectations and every, literally everyone's expectations. Uh, someone was like – people on Reddit and on Twitter have been posting threads of like the preseason predictions from a lot of major publications, and like none of them had the Mavericks in the top six. Some of them didn't even have them making the playing tournament at all again. So uh, just another just another MVP argument for Luka that Probably should MVP. not get lost. This team was not supposed to be good. 
No, they weren't. And you look at you honestly, if you want to take anything away from this Pistons game, it's that look how bad this Mavs team is without Luca. Obviously, Kyrie didn't play as well, and Lively didn't play. But I mean, this team, like the the idea of oh man, Luca has all this help now. I've seen this from a couple of Clippers fans. Like oh my gosh, Luca ha finally has all the help you need. No excuses now. It's like okay, he has some help now. But, like, he finally has, like, a competent basketball team. This team is not even complete anymore. They don't have a third scorer. And that really stood out in this Pistons game, that they just don't have that third guy to go out there and get a bucket every once in a while. Tim Hardaway is supposed to be that guy. Jaden Hardy is supposed to become that guy. And neither of them have really panned out in that way. If they had traded for a Kuzma-type player instead of a P.J. Washington or a Gafford, then they would have had that type of guy that could take over in a game like this and be like, oh, yeah, they should obviously beat the Pistons in a game where the Pistons really don't play anybody and the Mavs don't really play anybody. But it was just clearly obvious. They have a bunch of dudes out there. You know, there's like yeah. there's no scoring guy out there. There's no there's not even like a Karis Levert or a, you know, just somebody that can take over a game or take over a quarter or something like that. And and if you want to take that and take it as an argument for why Lucas should be MVP, go for it, man, because I think you can. There's no Michael Porter Jr. on this team. There's no guy that like Steps up. There's no Jalen. There's no Jalen Williams. There's no Chet. There's no like third guy that really pops. And you could tell in a game like this where it just looked like a bunch of dudes out there playing the quote unquote Pistons. <laughs> yeah, I mean this was this was such a stinker of a game. No, no Mavs starter <laughs> scored double digits. Like this is just a. Uh, I don't honestly don't credit, know if you can. Give credit. They didn't really play the second half. Yeah, true. So, true. They didn't so, play that right, many minutes. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't that they played a ton and then just couldn't do anything. Uh, but That's yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, it just it just was not a great showing, and you can just tell that Luca and Kyrie are the offense. Like that's it. Yeah, I mean these these are the type of games right here where like I I honestly think in a perfect world where money doesn't matter, these games just get canceled. <laughs> like they don't even happen. Just end it. Just be like I just done. I love basketball. I love watching basketball. I I enjoy going to like LA Fitness and waiting for a game. I enjoy watching the 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 pickup game happening in front of me. I sometimes these games are just like you have two teams going completely different directions. No one's playing. <laughs> like I just don't think there's much you can take away, except no. like flashes. Like Omax had some legit flashes in this game. Where you're like, okay, like yeah. we can see we can see the direction that could be headed in the summer. We'll take, we'll, take a, we'll take a look at some of those young guys at the end of this and talk about where they're going and all that stuff. But, yeah, Mavs face the Clippers now, and now we know for sure that the Mavs will be the fifth seed. Do you care that the Mavs will be on the road the first two games? Does that, does that bother you that the Mavs sat Luka and Kyrie? No. Not, I'll save my thoughts for this, for this series in, in the coming days, but I've, I've, I'll just save my thoughts. I, I asked Dana and I asked the listeners yesterday, the, your initial confidence meter, scale of zero to five, Zero means, oh, my gosh, the Mavs are getting swept. There's no chance. Five being the Mavs are sweeping. There's no chance the Clippers win. Like, where are you? Scale zero to five. Four. I, that's, that was my answer as well. I've seen, I've seen some Clippers fans who are like, I, I could see the Clippers winning this in five. I would be shocked, honestly. Yeah. If this is a four or five game series, it's, I think it's the Mavericks winning it. The Clippers could definitely win the series. Don't get me wrong. Like, there's Kawhi Leonard goes crazy and all of this other stuff happens. And, uh, you know, I'm not counting them out entirely, but I can't see a world where the Mavericks get dominated in this series. I, I just can't. It doesn't exist. This, yeah, well, yeah, the, Clip, the Clippers, they're not the same kind of juggernaut team that they have been in the past. They used to be, like, when the Mavs faced them in 20 and 21, they were, like, title contenders. Like, yeah. they were a team that you looked at as, okay, this team should go to the title. And this team, they had injuries, but, man, this team should – come together and win they, they just don't have the same type of wings to guard Luca as they used to there's no Nick Batum there's no Marcus Morris there's no like they're you know PJ Tucker's not the same guy like they're they're missing a bunch of guys that they used to have their small ball lineups just don't pop the same and so I'm with you I'm a four confidence wise I, I think that this Mavericks team should be able to to beat this Clippers team and I think it'll be hard like I think it could be six games very easily yeah I think Kawhi Leonard will come out and if he plays, I think that he, he'll be that's amazing. a serious that's he'll a serious still. concern. I, I well, Clippers fans don't, don't seem too nervous, but I, I, I'm not so sure, man. Some Clippers fans do because, like, there are times when they say nothing about Ka the, say nothing about Kawhi's injuries, and then he just comes back, and you're like, oh, okay, fine. But then sometimes yeah. they don't say anything about him, and then he's out for the season. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He hasn't played a playoff game since like 2021. I mean, it's been I a mean, while I, since he's played. 
I saw a, an update today that there was like, hey, Kawhi's here and he's like in the practice facility, and it's like, wait, like Is what? That an what's update? been go- <laughs> oh, like what's been going on? Like, where has he been before I, that? It's a little concerning, but if he like, I'm ho- I'm I hope he's healthy and plays. Like, I think it'll be a lot of fun to get this this trilogy, and I, I want to like. I feel very confident in the Mavericks, but I might have poo-pooed the Clippers a little bit there. Like, it, it should be a, a fun, tough, competitive series. Like, I don't want to make it seem like I'm like, oh, if the Mavericks don't sweep, then it's an embarrassment. Like, it, it should be a lot of fun. I am shocked the Mavericks are the betting underdogs currently, and I'd have to imagine by the time the series rolls around, that is different because I think people are going to pour money in on the Mavericks, so they're, they're going to shift that uh, slightly gambling corner. But um, call me a epe. <laughs> coming up, coming up. Let's get into that. Let's talk about how the uh, how the Nuggets loss affects the Mavericks. Let's talk about the uh, odds for this Clipper series because we got him here from FanDuel. We'll talk about all that and more. We'll do that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time for the NBA. It's coming, and with FanDuel, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. 150 bucks, win or lose. There's no like. Like, you have to do this, and then you get this. It's 150 bucks, win or lose. Right now, they have odds for Mavs Clippers. Clippers open a slight favorite. Minus 130, the Clippers, to win the series. Mavs, plus 110 to win the series. So, you get positive odds for the Mavericks right now. You bet 100 bucks, you get win 110 bucks if the Mavericks win the series. So, you might as well put some money down and see what happens on that one. So, go check it out on FanDuel. See what's available. Otherwise, go check it out, FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Again, New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your bet. First bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for listening to the show. We'll continue on. I think like seven days a week until the Mavericks season ends in whatever fashion it ends <laughs> there you I go that. i got yelled at so much when i said eliminated the other day and i apologize <laughs> profusely because i believe and i am here that's right if you don't believe yeah, you, you just be misspoke I, I knew you believed i knew you believed that was just uh an unfortunate misspeaking i used the wrong word i used the wrong word for <laughs> yeah. sure uh, the Nuggets lose to the Spurs 121 to 120. Wemby has like 17 points in a three minute span. The Nuggets are up by what, 23, 26 at one point. And then the Spurs come back. And usually we wouldn't make a big deal about it. Another game that doesn't really affect the Mavericks. But the Nuggets, in losing this, fall to three in the standings. And yeah. if it stays like this, which it looks like it is, the Nuggets no longer control their own destiny. If it stays like this, and I think Denver would have to win, and OKC and Minnesota would have to lo- both lose their last two games for Denver to jump back up to the one seed. If that doesn't happen, then the Mavericks are not in the Nuggets bracket, like their side of the bracket. So they wouldn't face the Nuggets to the Western Conference Finals. Slightly, how big of a deal is this? This is like uh, league-altering implications, honest to God, because Huge. the the Mavericks, for the Mavericks especially, they now find themselves, obviously, a first-round series that you have to take care of business in. Absolutely. And if this holds and the Thunder are the one seed, it, that is one of your most favorable matchups in the playoffs. Like I, I have uh, Thunder friends that I'm close with who have told me it's like the Th- the Mavericks and the Lakers are like the teams that we don't really want to see in the playoffs because they just wasn't, pose a lot of matchup problems with us. Wasn't Thunder friends KD's movie? Remember that movie that oh, KD made? Oh, I think yeah. it was, Thund- yeah, was, it, I think it was uh, Thunder Buddies. <laughs> Thunder wasn't it Thunderstruck? No, or was it Thunderstruck? <laughs> Thunder fa- Okay, wait, I gotta look it up. Thunder, Thunder, Thunder. friends. That does not sound <laughs> correct. <laughs> but uh, I do remember that movie though. Wow, the NBA player movie. Thunderstruck. Are... Thunderstruck okay. was the movie name, but Thunder Thunder that's, Buddies. That made... is... <laughs> Thunder Buddies is from Ted. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the Airbud version of KD's movie. <laughs> yeah, Thunder Buddies. <laughs> but no, uh, I mean that's it's huge. It, it's very big because I do think the Mavericks match up well against the Thunder. Not saying that would be an easy series or anything like that. Because we, we actually have no idea what the Thunder are going to look like in the playoffs. We haven't seen it. We don't know. Sometimes these young teams come out and immediately the lights are just shining way too bright. You can tell yeah. immediately. Saw that with the Cavs last year. And they would have to play one of the Suns, the Lakers, the Kings, or the Warriors in the first yeah. round. Like, that is not – I mean, that is no joke. This is the first time in – uh, this is the first time I think ever there's been 10 teams in the West that have been 10 games above 500. 
Like I That's went back insanity. to 1991. I counted all the way back, and then I just got bored of doing it. And so, <laughs> and I, and I don't think there's enough teams because they added yeah. teams recently. Like I don't think there's enough teams for there to be ten. Uh, there's been nine a couple times, but never ten. I mean, ten teams above, ten games above 500 is insane. And I mean, uh, those crazy. Warriors, Kings, Lakers, Suns teams are no joke, and they could, the, they can play the Thunder in the first round. Like, congrats, Thunder! You get to play one of those teams in the first round. The the Lakers give them a lot of. I, I think just looking at the playing teams right now. Suns, I think the the Thunder match up pretty well against them. Kings, I just don't see them having much of a threat to anybody. In the play. I'm not. I'm not even trying to be mean to them at this point. Like the the Mavs already took care of business against them. No, but, you, but it was a sell, it was like you you are a prophet because they've just been falling and falling and falling ever since. I the, told you, you, you I, I was watching. The, you you were on it. When they were ahead, the Mavs in the standings, I made sure to watch all their games. I'm like, dude, this team is a is a train wreck waiting to happen. Like, you just see it. Now, unfortunately, they they dealt with injuries and stuff that really kind of derailed their season. But even before then, you could kind of see them trending the wrong direction. What, what injuries? Kevin Herter? Malik Monk's a big one. That's true. The, yeah, the Malik Monk Luka one. That one was bad. For yeah, sure. that's that's but a that's a still have your two that's stars a, like. Dude, I, I'm telling you, man, there there are games where Malik Monk was their best player. That like are, it I feels agree. like a disproportionate amount for a six man. But um, <laughs> well, and then the Warrior, the Warriors are, are I think a little scary. For the Kings, it's wild that like literally two weeks ago, the Mavericks and yeah. Kings were fighting for like their right to get out of the play in. Two weeks mm -hmm. ago, and now the Mavs are the sixth or the fifth seed, and the Kings are the ninth seed. Like that's insane. To two weeks. Two weeks in the yep. West, and you lose a couple of games, and you fall down from, what, six to nine. It's insane. Well, think about two, three weeks ago, too. The Pelicans were rattling off wins, and everyone yes. below them was losing. And everyone was like, oh, well, it looks like we know our top five. Like, the Pelicans are going to solidify themselves. And then two weeks later, the Mavs clinched the, play clinched the five seed, and the Pelicans are now fighting tooth and nail to stay out of the playing tournament. So, yeah, it's been – I mean, 10 games above 500 to be a 10 seed is insane. <laughs> like, that's I mean, crazy. What was it last year? Last year – uh, last year, the, the, there was three teams that were ten games above five hundred. Like there yeah, was, there wasn't even in the three seed. Yeah, the uh, the Suns last year were forty five and thirty seven. They would yep. be the eleventh seed this year. Yeah, <laughs> out of the plane entirely. <laughs> out of I the mean, plane. That is actually crazy. I, and it, the scary thing is, is that you you would think it, it's going to get worse next season. You would think, yeah, but you never right. know. Uh, Shangun for the Rockets will probably come back. Uh, the, the Grizzlies, Grizzlies will, will be back. Will definitely bounce back. The uh, the Spurs with Wimbenyama will probably make some kind of a move or at least get a top pick and bring somebody in. And all those teams that are at the top, they're they're not old. I mean, the Clippers are like the oldest team. Clippers can yeah. fall off because of some weird trade thing that happens, but they got a new arena to open up, so they're gonna try try to do something splashy. Uh, yeah. Do you, okay, so last year in the West, there's. Ten, there's only three teams that are 10 games above 500, and the Mavs missed the postseason entirely. So they were mm -hmm. the worst in one of the worst seasons for the West. This year, there's 10 teams that are 10 games, and they finished fifth. What does that tell you about the Mavericks this year? That's – I mean, it's really impressive, man. I mean, it's just – when they – it's crazy, too, because I'm looking back at some of this Mavs stuff. I'm working on the my Luka MVP video, and it's like they were three games above 500 going into the trade deadline. Like, there was very much concern as to whether or not this team was going to be yet again fighting tooth and nail just to make the play-in tournament. Like, that was a very yeah. real concern. And this run that they're on, and of course, they lose tonight, but, you know, uh, yeah. before tonight, since February uh, 5th, which is when Kyrie returned from one of the injuries he was on, 24-7, and the best record in the West across all teams since then, the second-best net rating in the entire NBA, a 66-win pace in their net rating and that's that's over 30 games like that's not some minuscule yeah. sample size you know that's months yeah that that is months so that's and and what what's more impressive and, and exciting to me is like the, the only guy that's not under contract next year is Derek Jones Jr. right so in theory th this team gets a up some playoff uh, multiple playoff series under their belt uh this upcoming uh, postseason and they go into the offseason, and Derek Lively hopefully gets better. And even if Derek Lively doesn't improve that much, he's still a great piece to have on your team. And Omax develops into somebody. PJ and, and Gafford get an offseason? Yeah, they get an offseason together. And uh, who knows? Maybe Omax is on Team Canada. I mean, I don't know what they're looking like for the Olympics. Like, <laughs> do they have good enough depth there? Uh, Dwight Powell will be there. Loaded. Dwight Powell's on it. 
Maybe you can yeah, put in a good word. Any, they don't have any bigs. It's him and Kelly Olynyk, and that's it. Maybe maybe Dwight can put in a good word for Omax. Are you are you in on Olympics coverage? I have not even asked you this offline or anything. Are you in on Olympics coverage? Because we 100%. I did all kinds of FIBA coverage last year, and we will, we will do post games as if they are Mavs games for Slovenia. Dude, I love FIBA basketball. I mean, oh, it is so one fun. of the best viewing experiences you can get. So I'm a hundred percent in. Yeah, the the we'll Euro Cup, what was that? Two years ago, uh, Euro Basket, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's some of the best basketball you will watch. Period. That was the best. It's so good. Oh, so I'm so I'm good. always in on FIBA. It's great. Yeah, we'll go in. We'll go in on that. Yeah, Nuggets lose. The Mavs are fifth. Clippers. We know that series. We'll do all kinds of preview all throughout the week with this. And uh, you want to do the play? What's the playoff rotation, real quick? Do we know for sure? Hmm. I I think my the thing I can't quite get a gauge on is how often are they going to go to the maxi five minutes? Is that going to be a four to five minute a game thing where we're switching up looks, or is that going to be maxi's our backup five and lively is maybe getting spot minutes? That that thought's been in the back of my head a lot. It's well. It's weird because it's I go, I go I go both ways with it because I've been doing a lot of research on the Clippers. Their small ball lineup, the like non Zubots, non Daniel Tice, non Mason Plumley. They have three bigs by the way, which are who are all like not that great, but not that bad either. Yeah. Um. And they but the the Clippers small ball units have not been as good as they have been in the past. They're not like these. Oh my well, gosh, these these units are are so good. Like. Uh, their small ball unit right like this year is plus 5.2 net rating. Their offense is like in the 96th percentile, and their defense is the 29th percentile. Their defense has been awful when they play small. And in 2021, when they went seven, that same kind of lineup, the small ball unit was plus 10 net rating. Uh, and like their offense was much better. Like they, they just haven't been as good when they play those small units this season. And I think it's because of Harden and they can't play Harden, Westbrook, Kawhi and Paul George all at the same time. They tried it and it didn't work. Do, do you have who is in that lineup? Cause Nicholas Batum for like his Huge. whole career. It even still is like an unbelievable small ball player. Just yeah. does so many things that you need. It, even Marcus Morris, who who's really good in like a small ball role, uh, Robert Covington, like they don't have those big, wings really anymore that can you know i, I like amir coffee uh, i actually think he's a, I, <laughs> I, yeah i like i think amir coffee's a good player but he he's also one of these players where it's like i don't know what in a playoff setting what i'm getting you know he's like their josh green it feels like to me yeah yeah almost where it's like what, what he in the playoffs he you? could have a moment or he could be like almost a zero like yeah. we really do not know it could go any direction really but uh i'm interested in the maxi thing and then our starting five is set. I, I can't imagine a world yeah, where that changes. I think Exum's minutes see a spike. I think he plays a lot in the playoffs. Absolutely. In the playoffs, twenty-five plus su- minutes would be my guess. I was surprised he played in this game at all because I thought they would rest him because they're just worried about injury. But I guess he's he still needs a little, just a little keep keep going, just a little bit here and there. Yeah. Also, too, like if Exum if Exum doesn't start this game or play this game, like wh- who is? What what is your offense even resembling? Uh, shout out to uh, to Alex Fudge who got in for I think yeah. the first time as a Maverick. There's Check an Alex link. Fudge uh, music Check account on Twitter that tweets me all the time. Check, tweets me as well. Check checks into the game and like starts to dribble up the court. His thing is he's a high flying dunker. Like he's throwing down some insane dunks in college. He starts going down the court. Nobody between him and the basket, and completely turns the ball over. <laughs> it was like, oh boy, here we here we go with this one. This game is early April basketball, folks. Something else. Would not recommend uh, it. No, but yeah, I, XM I think gets a spike in minutes. I think Tim. Mm-hmm. Tim what do you think about Tim in a playoff setting? Because I posted this, and I've been talking to anybody that would listen to me about who the Mavericks' second leading scorer was in each Clippers game when they played them in 20 and 21. This, I'm like, I'm right. so big on this. Uh, well, but it's different players each time. It was Hardaway, one, two, three, four, five, six out of the uh, the 13 games, so like half. The other ones, Porzingis twice. Trey Burke, one time in 2020 oh. in game four, he had 25. <laughs> Dorian Finney-Smith, twice. Was the Mavs' second leading scorer? That's Maxi never Kleba, good. One time in 2021, had 14 points, and he was the second leading scorer on the Mavs. <laughs> like that, you forget that those teams had like 
nobody as another option. Tim Hardaway was yeah. legit their second option, and Brunson played awful in those series. No, Tim was actually really good in 2021 against the Clippers, like legitimately really good, Yes, uh, especially in their wins. But I just, looking back at that 2020, 2021 series, I don't even, I'm not even looking at them preparing for this series. Like it, it doesn't, it does not even matter. Like you look at those rosters, you know, you had JJ Redick, God bless him, JJ Redick's corpse out there, Nicola Melli. It's like, it's like, what were we rolling at? Boban playing 31 minutes in a game seven. It's like, what was my, going on, man? My favorite Boban stat about that, that series. So 2021, he's, Porzingis gets hurt and. So Boban starts three games, and he plays 20.8 minutes over a four-game stretch. D would you like to guess how many times in Boban's career he played 20.8 minutes or more in a four-game stretch at all, ever, in the regular season or playoffs? I feel like early in his career at the Spurs, he had to have done it a couple times. I thought so, too, but he didn't for the Spurs. <laughs> one time, one time in Boban's career in the regular season, he averaged 20.8 minutes per game. I think it was with the Pistons. And, uh, -huh. uh, yeah, and he, it was one time he did it, oh, and he, then he did it in the playoffs. Like, just what a weird thing. It, I mean, those playoff series with the Clippers were Luka, Rick Carlisle, and, like, literal magic, like cyberpunk magic that they made somehow, mm -hmm. that they extended those series. And that's one of the reasons why people look back and go, oh, Luka owns the Clippers. And people like, you know, uh, Steve Smith on NBA TV was like, the, Cl the Mavs won one of those series. Like, people go back and there's a Mandela effect where they think that the Mavs won one of those series because it was such a moral victory. Yeah. It was such a moral victory for the Mavericks to, like, even go seven or six games with that Clippers team with how good they were supposed to be and how good they were on paper and all that. And uh, it was just insane that Luka did all that to get them there. And now it's Luka in a playoff series where he's – Pretty healthy, where last time Mavs went into the playoffs, Luca was out for the first, what, three games? Yeah. So you've got that on your side, too. And he's got an actual legit second option with Kyrie, who's had playoff moments, who we know can be a playoff riser. Man, uh, Kyrie and LeBron in the 2016 finals, the stats that those two are putting up is just obscene. Even to go back and look on now, it's like, wow. I mean, that's all-time stuff. One of the reasons why Mavs fans – are so high on those old series. I want to say this too, is because th that was Luca's, you know, playoff debut. And then yeah. the first his playoff debut was in the bubble. And then the next one is like the real, like, all right, we're in stadiums now. When you have a young player making th their playoff debut, it's scary because you don't know. There are playoff risers yeah. and there are playoff droppers, so you really don't know. Uh, I mean, looking back at Luca's career in Europe and stuff, you could probably surmise that he was going to rise up. So that was like, but, a, oh my god, we have one of these guys. Like this guy is like a championship player. But it was set up as if anyone's gonna have the wings to defend to defend Luca, to the wings to throw at Luca. Matt, like we had four or five different guys that can all defend Luca. All these, you know, Nick Batum, Kawhi, Paul George, all that, and like he torched them, like just torched yeah. them over and over again, as if they, it didn't matter, as if they were, you know, like re replacement level defenders. <laughs> like it just didn't matter. And that's when we, that's when I think we all kind of realized, oh my God, this guy Luca is just on another level. He takes it mm -hmm. up in the playoffs, and that's why I have confidence in this season because I'm, I'm putting confidence in Luka, and I think he'll figure it out, and I don't think that Kawhi and Paul George are on that level anymore, and I don't think that – and I think that Kawhi being guarded by PJ, or P.J. Washington and Derek Jones Jr. will be better than <laughs> – it will be better for the Mavericks than when he was guarded by Seth Curry and Maxi <laughs> Kleba and Tim Hardaway Jr. I, I mean, that's literally – With like, Boban was, as your rim protector? It was Literally, Seth Curry was out there trying his best. Maxi was like – Rick Carlisle was like, Maxi, we need you to go out there and guard Kawhi. Like, that was like, he just literally threw him out there to do that. And he's completely out of position and all that. Uh, man, the Ugh. Mavs were just, what the hell was Donnie Nelson doing back then? <laughs> <laughs> Boban, 31 minutes in a game. Like, that is shocking stuff, man. I mean, that is shocking stuff. In a game seven, a game like two, and you're like, all right, we maybe we try out this wrinkle, but game seven, that's you're like, you know what? F it. This is this is what we're just throwing it all at. We're throwing it all at the dartboard. <laughs> oh, the kitchen but sink. You want to know what I'm interested in? Oh God, not the kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> the bussy stat. The drip. Lucas Dude, leading the league in drip. I was literally laying in bed laughing so hard for like 30 minutes about the uh, kitchen sink stat. Man, <laughs> I could not believe it.
If you're not on Twitter, which many of you are not, congratulations to you. Your mental health is probably better than ours. <laughs> uh, there, Andy Bailey, who's a friend, uh, posted like all these stats for all the MVP candidates, and like there's all these catch-alls. You know, there's there's the LeBron stat there from was it 538 or uh, basketball index. There's Raptor, index. There's like there's all these there's all these just like catch-all stats that are all these like advanced stats. And one of them was drip, and Luca leads the league in drip. And then there's also right, one baby. called kitchen sink, where it's all the stats all together. And like, eh, we're thinking too hard on this. I mean, no like, kitchen. It wasn't just kitchen. It was kitchen sink win probability added. <laughs> I was laughing so hard for so long, like just the disbelief of everyone on Twitter is like, what What are we doing here? You want to know what's funny? Is Jokic's <laughs> best argument. Jokic, it, they don't even have to do all of that. Jokic's best argument is Luka's best argument, which is just watch the game. Turn yeah. a game on and watch. Yeah. And you don't need all of the game. Yeah, you don't need these these gobagook stats. Like just <laughs> just watch them play uh, and you'll see like the impact these two guys have. But what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. I'm interested to see Russell Westbrook's minutes in this series. Yeah. I really am. Cause he's been really good for them. Very and good. He he's guarded Luca when he's played with the Clippers. Like he's taken that assignment and has frustrated Luca. Now I will say the pesky those pesky smaller defenders that get under Luca's skin a little bit and maybe you know annoy him during the regular season. We've seen in the playoffs Luca just absolutely throttles those guys. Like those guys, I'm thinking of like Patrick Beverly who was unplayable immediately in that Clipper series along with Zubats. So I, I'm interested to see how that goes. But um, that because that the other thing. that makes their I mean, it's weird if Westbrook has to play a lot. That's the other thing about Luca is he just like negates multiple rotation players immediately for the other team. Yeah, in a way that like Kawhi and Paul George don't like. They, like not many players do. Like Anthony Edwards doesn't. Like there's not many players in the NBA where you just go, "Hey, multiple of your rotation players who you guys thought you would count on are just you cannot play them." Yeah, <laughs> because we will just destroy you. Uh, and there's it's only like certain players that do that, and I think LeBron and Jokic and. Mm -hmm. uh, Luca are like kind of the only ones over the last Chris Paul years. in his prime would do that too where it's just like I'm going to I'm going to find who is a defensive liability on your team and I'm going to call screens I'm going yeah. to get re-screens I'm going to get you switched on to me to a point where it's just uh, you, you either have to double me which you don't, teams really don't want to do in the playoffs or you uh you have to get him off the court entirely yeah Let's let's spend the last couple of minutes here talking about some of these young guys because they we got some we got to look at them in this Pistons game and I kind of want to know like we won't we won't talk about them for a long time till the off season so like where are we with some of these yeah. young guys? Um, Omax, I thought had a pretty decent game in this one had a decent showing. He played 29 minutes. He was six of 12 from the field, hit two threes, 16 points, six rebounds, two steals, a block. He had a couple of pretty good plays. He had a huge dunk on James Wiseman where he just like. Oh my! He should have gotten a foul, but he took his head off. Basically, it's an insane, uh, an insane dunk. But I I'm excited for Omax. I, I wish that they would have used him a little more this season. But I'm going to trust in the coaching staff that they that they know he needs a little more seasoning. He looked a little jittery. Like his defense still looks a little jittery out there, where he's just kind of like, like spazzing and like flying around. But his to his defensive tools, man, are right there. And if he can, if he comes around and becomes like a rotation player next year, he can play 15, 20 minutes then, man, like that's such a great type of player to have. Uh, and his shot looks so much better than it did at the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think them being patient with him was by far the best thing they could have done with him. And, yeah, the defensive – I mean, you see the defensive tools because when he has the possessions, like, you know, Malachi Flynn, that guy dropped 50 points like a week ago. Like that's that's the thing that happened. He had a couple of possessions against him where he just, I mean, clamped Put him, him. in jail. Like, put him in – yeah, put him in O maximum security prison. Like there's nowhere hey. for him to go. He uses that, you know, foot speed that he has, that lateral quickness paired with that crazy length. I mean, on the court, like it's so noticeable how lengthy he is. So I am very, I'm very, I'm very excited about him because you also see offensive flashes that go beyond just catch and shooting and, and just shooting catch and shoot threes. Yeah. His offense, I would, I would describe it as optimistic. Like he does some things where you go, oh, that was like a good thought, but you just, yeah. didn't, you didn't complete it. Uh, and I think it'll just take some more time for him. And he's been playing right. in the in the G League where there are no centers in the G League. There are only like six, mm -hmm. eight guys. So he's usually the biggest guy in the court. Like he's playing like Giannis out there, <laughs> you, know, you know. Yeah. And he just has he just has to adjust his game a little bit. But his his three point shot, I cannot express enough how much better it looks in the beginning of the season. There was it felt like there was some motion on his 
on his hand, like when he would put the ball up, it felt like his hand would turn, and it doesn't anymore. There's not as much movement on the you know the the height of his shot. I, I'm just I feel so good about his like where he can go going forward. Me too, honestly. I'm I am if if he is a 15 minute per game guy next year, that's massive. And if it's a good 15 minutes, if it's not like a desperation, oh god, thing. If that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, Josh Green, we saw him. You saw him get get some some extended run in this game. He's been back from injury for a couple games now. Twenty three minutes, just four points, three rebounds, two turnovers, one steal. Missed all three of his threes. Um, saw a couple of people on Twitter just kind of bemoan, like, "Oh, he's just a guy. He's just a guy." And we we got to stop hoping for him to take another another leap. To me, he's only twenty three, and like, I still I I hold. This, I hold true the same thing that I said when he got drafted and when we first realized like what type of player he is. Those type of guys take a while to get to the level that you want to. Like, this is probably a terrible example, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Uh, like Derek White. Derek White comes into the league at 23 years old. Same age as Josh Green is right now. And like, Derek White played like eight minutes a game for San Antonio, and then he kind of took a step forward the next year and kind of and became like a rotation player, playing 25 minutes a game. And he wasn't really this Derek White where people are ridiculously saying he's better than Kyrie until like his 26-27 season. Like guys like that, they take a little while to get to the spot where they're a really good role player because you have to be really smart and intelligent to play good defense in the NBA. There's not a lot mm -hmm. of really young players that, that come in the NBA and go, oh my gosh, I can play like – all NBA defense in my rookie season. This is why Wembenyama is like such a revelation and such an insane player to watch because he is that. But I think with a Josh Green, like even like KCP is another example I thought of. He, he started in Detroit. He was 20 years old when he came in the league and he was just playing on some bad Detroit teams for like four years. And then he goes to the Lakers and he's a solid role player. And it, it took him like four or five years to really figure out who he is in the NBA. And I think Josh Green can follow that same kind of path that those guys did. Not, it doesn't mean that he'll become a KCP or a Derek White, but like those guys do take time if they're going to become those like high end level role players that everybody wants. Yeah, like I, I get the frustration when Josh Green, you know, kind of looks, uh, you know, in, in a a game like this. Theoretically, like you're on the floor with a bunch of end of bench guys on the Pistons. <laughs> yes. Like yes. you would like to stand out a little bit more, but Josh Green, he he needs a Kyrie or a Luca. Like he's not here, give me the ball and get out of the way. I'm, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. Like, he needs to play alongside a guy like Kyrie or Luka to have, you know, uh, advantages that they create for him. That's just who he is right now. And look, I, I'm just going to be real. That's probably who he will always be. But right now, he's like a guy who could be, I think, comfortably a top eight or nine guy in a, like, a, a rotation that is trying to contend. And there's there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. Like, if that's if that's who you draft at 18th overall, you could do way worse than that. I mean, go look at the the late teens, early twenties in the draft. Don't don't go look at his year because it's uh, <laughs> one of those weird draft years where everybody around him was really really good. But uh, usually, you know, that's like, all right, I got a rotation player out of this. You know, thirteen like, million dollars a year. Poku was ahead of him. Kyra Lewis Jr. was ahead of him. You know, like yeah. Uh, I mean, th Prince, that area Prince is always Chilo? like a, a map. The draft is a crapshoot, anyways. But that specific range is always like, let's hope we get a rotation player here. Yeah, and Josh Green definitely is one with with some legit flashes though too. Right, he right. has some stuff for sure, and that's what I'm saying. He ha we've seen some flashes. Not like we've seen nothing out of a Josh yeah. Green. Uh, Jaden Hardy is another one we could talk about. This is to me, this is a game like this should be a Jaden Hardy game where Jaden Hardy comes mm -hmm. out and is like, "Oh dang, you like really stood out." And he had 25 points and you know seven boards, two assists, he had four turnovers, uh, and he had he had a couple moments here and there. But we learned in Summer League, he's not going to be a point guard. Like You can't put the ball – he's a two. Like, you can't put the ball in his hands and expect him to just go and do the same kind of things that Kyrie does. Like, he's, they're just – they're not the same type of player, even as much as we want them to be the same type of player. They're not. Uh, and what's sad is, like, we're seeing some of these two-type players, like a Jordan Poole. I've compared him to Jordan Poole, Anthony Simons. Uh, there's a couple other guys that are Tyrese Maxey that like you either become a Tyrese Maxey or an Anthony Simons where you can have the ball in your hands and you can you can really like do a lot of stuff like run pick and rolls and do all, like drive and like all that or you become a Jordan Poole where you're like hey actually what do you do here <laughs> you know like like what yeah. do you do here uh, and he can have good moments in the right system with you know with Steph and Clay and they're all a ball movement a bunch of wide open shots and I think Hardy probably could too the map system is not that. And so I don't think you're going to see the best of what Hardy can do if he's not going to be in that system. And sometimes that looks like like this sometimes. And 
I'm, he's still only 21, though. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, we can still see some more from him, and it could take him a little while to figure out who he is in the NBA and what he can bring. I, I love Jaden Hardy. I want him to succeed very badly. Um, I, I have found myself now that we're at the end of the season, and I'm assuming he's just not going to see playoff minutes, really. Not at all. Uh, uh, a little disappointed in, in year two, Jane Hardy. I mean, the thing that concerns me more than anything else is, okay, you know, he's not a lead guard or whatever. Okay. That that was like always kind of a, a best case scenario type of Could thing. Fun. <laughs> I just, I don't see like the separation ability, like the ability to create space at a consistent level, which Hardy absolutely has to do. Like if he wants to stick around, that has to be a skill that he has is like the ability to create and get tough sh- shots up. And he does get tough shots up. Because he just that separation ability is not there, so all of his shots are incredibly difficult when he isolates. He's got that little Chris Paul mid range shot where he can like it's a kind of like a little like a mini step back into a jumper, and like that's a shot you feel okay. That's that's a flash where you can you can project that to be used in multiple different scenarios. But you're right, like there is no other there's no other like skill that's popping out. We've seen some flashes with passing too. Like yeah. he can be a good he can be a good passer, and that's where you go, man. I just like. Like you see some of the tools of a guy that could be a Simons or a Maxi type player, and it just hasn't all come together. Again, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna just keep saying he's super young, and we saw him dominate the G League, so there's something there. Like, yeah. I do think that there is something there, and that's the thing that frustrates us a lot about a Hardy, is that he was in the G League Ignite, played not that, played played okay in his you know his Ignite year, and wasn't efficient at all. And then the Mavericks throw him down to the Texas Legends, and he averages 30 a game on really good efficiency, and you go. Oh my God! Well, this guy's too good for the G League, and now you see him this year, and he can barely get any playing time. And when he is out there, there's not really that many flashes, and it can get frustrating. But growth is not always linear, you know. Yeah, that's true. I will say that uh, a couple of things. Anthony Simons is like a, a special athlete, which I just don't think Hardy is. Sure. Yeah. Which is also kind of plays into he's he's really going to have to create a, create space and figure out ways, and it just hasn't been there yet. Like I'm not saying that it's a it's a complete and total failure. Like it could definitely happen, but I, I'm not as hopeful as I once was. But he he, well, it, he reminds me kind of like baseball. The quadruple A pitcher is what they call him, or the quadruple A <laughs> pitcher who player who <laughs> just dominates in the minors. But just there's just something about the majors where they, it just yeah. can't happen. Well, and Tyrese Maxey is one of the fastest players in the NBA, so that's his separation yeah. ability too. So like maybe Hardy's still trying to find his voice or like find his like his his one skill. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to write off a 21-year-old who who was a top high school guy. And the other thing, I, I saw a couple of people tweet like, oh, we should have traded Hardy when his value is at the most. We have no idea ever what <laughs> yeah. players' values are. Like there's Hardy – the players are not a stock market where you're like, oh, yeah, when yeah. Hardy had a 30-point game that one time against Utah when Josh and Hardy both went off for 30 uh-huh. at the same time, they should have traded yep. him right that moment. Like, that's not how it works. Like, I Yeah, that's my did. favorite thing. <laughs> they, You know, the NBA should make that. They should make a, a – they should pull all the GMs and we could have a stock market that we could check online. Like, oh, my God, did you see Hardy it. stocks up? His Hardy stocks up 25%. Did did Cuban just buy Julius Randle stock? Like, is that, is that, is that? <laughs> uh oh, the the Mavs have sold all of their Hardy stock. Get out, guys! Get out. <laughs> they legit have like they actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah that's, that's I, I don't think Hardy's the, ever the had three and D. The three and D Nasdaq is down five points at the end. <laughs> at the end of selling today. Oh, <laughs> uh, that would that would be legit. Somebody get on that. That would be so funny. But I don't I don't know if Hardy uh. I don't know what his value ever was, if there were, my, was any. Yeah, my, my one hope for Hardy this year is that, like, there's a game where Luka and Kyrie and Tim Hardaway are, like, all kind of in foul trouble or something, and Hardy comes in and hits, like, three big shots. That's, like, my one yeah. hope for him in the playoffs is all of a sudden, like, we have such a fun Hardy party moment in the playoffs like that. Uh, well, that's my one hope for him this year. But You want to know one thing that I'm monitoring in the playoffs? Derek Jones cool. Jr. could price himself out of the Mavericks mm. I, like he's one he's one of those role player types where if the Mavericks do go on a run and he's really important which I would imagine yes. he would be that he some team somewhere especially like maybe a younger team that wants to maybe get a little bit better and has a lot of yeah, money the Pistons. could the Pistons <laughs> the Spurs I mean any of these teams could price the Mavericks out immediately which would which would suck which is takes us back to Omax and hoping that Omax fills that role and that, that he yeah. can, can jump into that but the Mavs I've been really good because they've needed his like Derek Jones Jr.'s point of attack defense and Josh Green was, you know, 
not proven to be that yet and to be able to right. guard that. So, yeah, Derek Jones Jr. also – there's a couple times in this game where he had some some drives to the rim. That's something I was looking for for him is, like, put the ball in his hands a little bit more. He had some good looking good looking drives at the rim. I'm feeling I'm feeling good about Derek Jones Jr. going in the playoffs. I am too. I, I'm feeling very confident. We're gonna need him. Well, also the Mavericks have the Las Vegas money, so they can play for whatever, I guess. <laughs> well true, but uh I'm talking salary cap wise. Yeah, I it's, hope so. It's a, it's a different it's a different game now with the aprons. Like it's it's yeah. no longer just like the warrior strategy of well we can pay four hundred million dollars for our our salary and we'll just eat it and the only thing that the only thing that it costs us is money that's not the case anymore you know we don't we can't think about it that way. Well, it, is Derek Jones Jr. the type of player? Probably not, right? Where a team's like, okay, teams are offering you the mid level. We have cap space. Uh, just do one year, twenty million. Yeah, like a Bruce like Bruce Brown, Brown did. Yeah, I don't know if he's that level of role player to be honest with you. Probably not. Bruce Brown had but a bit of a track also, record. But also the cap's going up, so twenty million is not twenty million anymore. Yeah, I, I mean the Bruce Brown. I don't know the Bruce Brown deal might be uh because, but the thing too is I think people need to start understanding this that there's no such thing as sal- like salary cap anymore. No team is operating like that. No team is going into free agency with money really. Like the Sixers are going to be a lone exception because the free agents just don't hit the market like that really. So having guys who are 20 million, even at the time where it's like, oh, what is that contract? But having that trade piece as a contract could be huge. That's why they should have signed Brunson to whatever de- whatever money he wanted. I'll die that, on the hill that Kyrie's just better for what the Mavs got going on. That and many other reasons. Uh, well, I think it worked out. I'm gonna be real. Well, they, they it worked out for everyone. The draft pick and Dorian and time. <laughs> they yeah. lost a lot of things in that in that transaction uh, and leadership and chemistry and <laughs> so many things that they lost. <laughs> Good vibes. The, we, Probably I a lost lot of the fans. ability to play the vibes are immaculate drop. I can't play that anymore. I'm sorry. We're left with uh, fans who at the end of last season said, "I think I hate basketball." So. <laughs> Uh, me, who almost got alcohol poisoning because of the Hornets <laughs> games. <laughs> oh, my God, man. I can't oh, believe the, the, the shift between last year and this year. It's amazing. It's amazing what they've, what they've done. And I wanted to point out, like, how good the West was this year and how bad the West was last year as, yeah. man, the Mavericks are, like, really legit. Sixth best record in the league. And I – okay, so I saw a, a Clippers guy who tweeted out that the Mavericks hadn't beat – anybody like I guess the only top six seed that we've beaten since the all-star break is the nuggets which yeah. it's kind of crazy that I looked true. at it and it's true but then you you dive a little bit deeper and it's like okay but but if the Mavericks lose to any of these teams they played they're in the top six like that's how tight some of these races are you know yeah like the well, Suns if the Mavericks drop that game they're a game better they're in the top six the Heat are in the top six if they win one of their two Mavs games you could also have extended it back to when the trades first happened and they beat the Thunder in that first game and, yeah. Uh, they. I mean, lost technically, the, the Knicks. They lost to the Thunder when. Yeah, that's true. They lost to the Thunder when Luca wasn't playing. So, like, I don't, there's a lot of context in some of those stats, but. Uh, and it's like right. I broke it down. Like, it. It, over that stretch, if you the teams that weren't in the top six, like like the Suns were seven and two in their last nine. The Heat were eleven and three. The Kings were nine and four. The Rockets had an eleven game winning streak. The Mavs are still the Warriors' only loss in their last twelve games. <laughs> like that's kind of crazy how well they're playing. Oh, they're getting destroyed right now by the Pelicans, actually. So <laughs> that's, about, that's about to change. Well, what is a 15-point game, 14-point game? That's nothing in the NBA. That's true. That's nothing in the NBA. Clippers are down at the half, 61-60. to, 60 <laughs> to the Oh, chest. can you imagine? Doesn't can matter. Can you imagine? Doesn't matter. Doesn't I'm matter. I'm saying, can you imagine if they do end up losing both? Well, hey, the Mavs, are t- the Mavs tanked this game. Are you up in arms yeah. about that, NBA media? John Hollinger, are you mad about this? Here's the Utah Jazz starting lineup. Luka Samanich, Taylor Hendricks. Samanich. (laughs) Samanich, Omar Yurtsevin, Johnny Juzang, and Keontae George. (laughs) You could pronounce three of them. (laughs) Good God, man. No, I think I did good. Oh, I actually didn't even know Jason Preston was on the Jazz. He has nine minutes at halftime. Is he in their ticketing department? Like, (laughs) (laughs) He was on the Pick a Side podcast. That's how I know. Oh my god. They got literal go. podcasters out on the floor. <laughs> That's where the Mavs are. Feeling good about them. I'll continue to do episodes. Stick back with us. Uh Mavs will have a Sunday game. Probably be me and Reggie on that one. And uh Luke and Kyrie will not play in that game. We already know that. So we'll see what happens with that. But there you go. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs.
Peace out. Boom. It's going to be a big game for the Thunder. Yeah, they have something to play for. Spoil their night, Omax.